everyone, and thank you for joining me. I'm Tracy Harris, and this is At Home in My Head, the podcast that explores life in the cottage at Woodland Corners. In this episode, we'll be talking about reversal of religious symbolism in Francis Lawrence's film, Constantine. This episode will contain spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie and spoilers are a problem for you, consider yourself warned. In the last episode of At Home in My Head, I talked about the use of religious figures in the film I, Robot. It put me in mind of the film Constantine by director Francis Lawrence. I enjoyed that movie because it used a number of religious symbols as it flipped them on their heads. The movie is about a young chain smoker, John Constantine, who survived a suicide attempt and now battles demons here on Earth. His current situation is that he's dying from lung cancer as a result of his constant smoking and his suicide has condemned him to hell once he really does die. Meanwhile, Satan lies gleefully in wait to receive his soul. A psychic woman, Angela, who hides her abilities, is investigating the death of her sister, which has also been ruled a suicide. Angela does not believe her sister Isabel, a devout Catholic, would have taken her own life, due to the severe consequences. And in another thread... There's a plot, including the son of Satan, going rogue to enter Earth, with help from some surprising characters. There may be more to discuss on plot, but we'll work as we go. Hopefully, that will be enough to set up most of the scenes we'll discuss. And as before, this is not an in-depth analysis, it's just a few examples to have fun with religious symbols in film. The first thing that caught my attention was the method Constantine uses to enter Hell. I found Wikipedia's description interesting. It simply said he used a familiar. For folks who don't know, a familiar is generally an animal that is possessed or acts as a spirit comrade or a guide to witches and such. When it comes to Angela taking the same journey to hell, the wiki says she does so through a near-death experience. While it's true that Constantine held a cat and Angela nearly drowned, What the wiki left out, in my estimation, was the most interesting common denominator. Constantine uses a bucket of water to soak his feet, and Angela's near-death experience happens in a bathtub where she is fully submerged in water while clothed, held under by Constantine himself. The imagery is baptism. Constantine being partially immersed as practiced by Catholics and Angela dressed and fully submerged in the image of Protestant methods. Constantine is based mainly on Catholic tradition where baptism is, for the most part, a requirement for salvation or entry into heaven after death. But in Constantine, it's being turned into a method of entry into hell while one is still alive. The next fun symbol play I noticed used the angel Gabriel. In Christian tradition, Gabriel was the angel that heralded the birth of Jesus. Gabriel is sometimes depicted with a trumpet as the herald of God. A surprise plot twist well into the movie reveals that Gabriel is one of the players helping the son of Satan to maneuver his way into life on earth, unbeknownst to his father, Satan. Gabriel has a chip on his shoulder about mankind and doesn't believe that man is deserving of holding the favored status of God. Gabriel intends to bring about a horrible tribulation on earth so that man will suffer and respond in such a way that they prove their worth and earn God's favor. So, driven to evil from jealousy, Gabriel gets turned on his head, and rather than heralding the coming of the Christ child, He's now announcing and participating in the coming of the son of Satan to fill the world with evil rather than save it. It's also interesting in talking about the revelation of Satan's son that he is also planning to be born into earth through a woman via a C-section at the hands of Gabriel using another religious symbol, the spear of destiny. So, in Constantine, rather than a virgin birthing a god, we have a woman who is most likely not a virgin birthing the son of Satan. The next issue is about suicide. It isn't so much a symbol as a doctrinal situation, but it serves the same stand-it-on-its-head purpose in the film. 
Constantine is condemned to hell for a failed suicide attempt. Generally speaking, in Catholic tradition, if a person commits suicide, they're denied burial on sacred ground. Let's just say it's a really bad thing and generally earns you a one-way ticket in a handbasket. But in an interesting twist, John Constantine, toward the end of the film, slits his wrists in a last-ditch effort to save Angela and her sister. Satan, who has been salivating for Constantine's soul, comes to Earth personally to retrieve it from the dying Constantine. Constantine then reveals to Satan the details of his son's plot with Gabriel, and Satan takes care of business, kicks some angel ass, and expresses gratitude to Constantine in the form of granting a request. Constantine uses his death as a mechanism for mercy and asks Satan to release Angela's sister, Isabel, from hell, allowing her to enter heaven. Satan complies, but then finds himself unable to drag Constantine's soul to hell because Constantine has committed such a pure act of selflessness and sacrifice that he has now destined himself for heaven. So in an unexpected turn, we see suicide saving someone's soul and guaranteeing them entry into heaven rather than condemning them to hell. This scene then morphs into another interesting flip-flop, where Satan sees his dilemma and can't bear the thought of losing Constantine's soul to God. In a desperate bid, Satan reaches into Constantine's body and removes the cancer, simultaneously granting him his life back from the suicide. Satan has no choice but to bank on the hope that Constantine will not be able to maintain his state of salvation and will somehow screw up at some point and condemn himself again to hell. Allowing Constantine to die would guarantee his slot in heaven, but letting him survive means at least a shot at getting him back in hell at some point. In biblical tradition, Jesus often proved his divinity through miracles, often divine acts of healing, including raising people from the dead. In this case, we have Satan healing someone and bringing them back from the dead. Generally, not a role Satan plays in Christian tradition. In summary, since I wasn't raised Catholic, I'm sure I missed more than a few fun flips. These were just the biggies that jumped out at me while I was viewing it. But it was fun to see the creative way the writers twisted the themes to invert them for the film. If you recognize more of these in the movie, feel free to post them in comments. In the meantime, happy movie viewing. That's it for this episode of At Home in My Head, exploring life in the cottage at Woodland Corners. Thanks for listening, and as always, stay safe, be well, and never stop exploring.